Hiya, Frank. Would you like to be a part of history? Yes, I would. Big business and the government are working together, trying to pull us apart. Something's got to be done. What else you say? Now's not the time to not say. I'm a natural lover. We're going to war with these people. War. Things have gotten out of hand with our friend. You gotta sit down, everybody says so. I'm not sitting down, I can't do it! It's what it is. What it is. I know things. They don't know why I know. What a movie. And the young lady you see on camera, Welker White, is in that movie. She plays opposite Al Pacino. She's uh, Josephine Joe Hoffa. Welcome to One on One here at the Tish WNET studio. Thank you. Um, we're taping this a little bit before Christmas 2019. It'll be seen after that. I absolutely love this movie. Did you love it when you saw it? I, I did. <laughs> what do yeah. you love about it? Oh, gosh. It's so epic. It's so far reaching. It, it touches on our history. It, it gets us back into the uh, a genre I think a lot of us really love from Scorsese. It brings together such an incredible cast of actors in large roles and small roles. And it there's a power to the life of this guy that, for whatever reason, I don't know about you, but- Hoffa uh, or Frank Sheeran. Sheeran. Yeah, that Frank we, Sheeran, see, we see his entire life, practically. And we can, uh, we connect with it in a, in a way that's very unexpected, I, I do. Yeah. Um, such that when we see him at the end of his life, which is kind of the framing device, there's a sense of our own loss. Yeah. Um, and that we come in alone and we go out alone. Three and a half hours. I told you, um, it's been out um, on Netflix just a little bit. It'll be obviously there for a while. That, that, that is the first time you ever did something like that because obviously the Netflix thing coming out after it's in the movies for a yeah. couple of weeks. That's new. You think that's going to continue? I think it will, Does yeah. it matter? Do you think it matters where you see a movie? Because I saw it in both places, in the theater and then at home. Uh, gosh, that's a big question. I, I think it's a different experience. It is. For sure, yes. Um, does it, are, are we in a new era that, that has opened up a lot of opportunities for people? Yes, is that incredible? Yes. Um, is there something lo uh, something lost by not seeing a movie like this uh, in a theater? M maybe a little bit, yeah. It's interesting, so. Martin Scorsese, Scorsese was just quoted as saying, please, I beg people not to look at, watch this movie on their phone. <laughs> I, like, leave it I can't at that. even see, I, uh, like, yeah, I can barely see, yeah, 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 like your Apple Watch or something. He's got that. a point. So I'm fascinated by your career. Were you the babysitter? I the was, in Goodfellas. For, in Goodfellas, mm -hmm. who needed her lucky hat. That's to right. To make the drug deal and things didn't work out, as everyone knows. Um, again, working with such an incredibly powerful cast. You were 24, yeah. you said, when you did that. Yeah. Playing a little bit younger. Long, long winded question. Any part of you intimidated challenged by being with such iconic and much older actors? At the time. At the time yeah. and or. And now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's definitely in the front of, I would think, any actor's mind when you're working with icons and you're working with people who are the best at what they do. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible, inc incredibly challenging because it's scary, but also an incredible invitation. So I would say both of those things were operating in both situations. Describe the experience of being directed by Martin Scorsese. Well, people have said it before. He, he creates a world and then invites you to enter into it. And the world is so detailed and so rich and so enveloping that right away a lot of that fear, I think for, for most actors have described this kind of falls away because you you are so supported in the world. And he's a real collaborator. Not all film directors are that way. Define that. He in, invites you to bring whatever you want to bring. And he welcomes it, and he'll shape it and guide it. But he, he, um, he wants to see what you've got. And, mm. and he wants you to bring yourself and all of your ideas and all of your excitement. You know, the scene um, is so interesting is that you're not on camera for this, the telephone call yeah. from De Niro playing Frank Sheeran, the Irishman, who, I'm not doing, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm not gonna screw it up for you, but it's an incredibly awkward, difficult, painful call for him to make, and for you being 
Joe Hoffa to receive on the other end yeah. because Jimmy Hoffa has disappeared. Right. The idea of you not being on camera and acting, help us understand that. Is it any different? Well, uh, the way that was shot was in the script originally, it was written that as, as you see it, which is Frank makes the call and you, you only see his response to what he's hearing. Very halting. Yeah. Uh, when, when we shot that, they decided to shoot my side as well. Uh, I think with the possibility they might use it just as, as a possibility. Did they do it live? Uh, well, he would be on the other end, so we were called in for each other. Okay. Yeah, so we were actually hearing each other live. That doesn't always happen when you shoot right. a phone call. So it's really nice when, they, when it does. It makes a big difference. So we shot for each other. Powerful. Um, yeah. Very. Yeah. I have asked many actors this question, but I, I'm very curious with you. When did you know that acting was the passion that it has become for you? When did you know? Um, about age six or seven. Six? Yeah. Where? Yeah. I saw I, my mother. I was living in Texas at the time in Houston, and my mother went to, t took me to my first play, which was this big outdoor amphitheater called Theater Under the Stars. And it was a production of South Pacific. And the overture began. And at the very beginning of the play, the director had had a few children, had directed a few children to run across the stage as the opening. And in the moment the children ran across the stage, I, I had like a lightning bolt move wow. through my body. And I said, to, like tugged on my mom's shirt. And I said, how do I do that? How do I do that? I want to do that. She was like, uh, okay, we have to watch the play. And I kept badgering her and badgering her. And I, that was it. And I started taking acting classes and going to children's theater programs and all that. You were taking them then. You mm -hmm. teach now at Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn College. College. You do private acting lessons as well. I for do. People. I do. How much do you enjoy that? I love it. Teaching. Love it. Coaching. Love it. Yes, it's a complete because? passion. Uh, it's just really wonderful to share what you have with somebody else, and especially with a younger generation of actors. I, I work sometimes with people my own age as well, but to share the knowledge and the experience and help them get to where they want to be. There's not much more rewarding than I knew you do, you do, some, do some corporate coaching. Yeah. In my other life, I do some coaching in public presentation. When you help someone do that, beyond your extraordinary performance is not mine, yours, there's something to that. Yeah, there really is. It's, it's really special. Yeah. Well, I advise folks, if you haven't seen The Irishman, it's easy to see. Make sure you check it out. And Welker... Why he plays Josephine, uh, Joe Hoffa, and you're just a terrific actor and also um, someone who's an easy guest to talk to. Thank you very much. Great to be here, Steve. Great. I'm Steve Adubato. This is the Tish WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. Be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by PSE&G, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, PNC, Grow Up Great, Atlantic Health System, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Rowan University. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Monthly and by New Jersey Family Magazine and njfamily.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.